Ms. Sun, welcome to In Conversation. Thank you. Are Chinese tourists ready to go out there and hit all the sites, or are they still afraid and want to stay at home? I think we have seen pent up demand after uh, being locked down for two months uh, to uh, defeat against the virus. Uh, so particularly for the high end of the customers, uh, we saw quite a strong demand from our customers. Let me pick up on that, the high end. So wealthy people want to go out and they're ready to, to go and travel already? I think uh, for uh, C-Trip customers, we target at the middle to high end of the customers. Uh, the most expensive tool we sold before cost about 200000 per person per trip. And guess how long did it take us to sell these packages? 200,000 uh, renminbi or $200,000? USD, USD, 200,000 USD per person, per trip. And how long did you take to sell it, you say? Take a guess. Uh, I don't know, a month? 17 seconds. <laughs> okay, but this was prior to the pandemic. This was prior to COVID-19. Do you right. think you're going to come back to that level where you can sell a $200,000 trip in 17 seconds? I think uh, those obviously are the very top end uh, of the customers. Uh, it's uh, 80 days around the world uh, for 200,000 person per trip. Uh, so you can see the demand uh, for these customers are resilient. And this year, because of the border control, some of the demand will be converted into domestic travel business. What about uh, one travel commentator who rather optimistically said that people might even want to go and travel to Wuhan at some point? I think so. I think so. I think once the vaccine is uh, developed, uh, medicine is developed, Wuhan will become, I, I think Wuhan probably will become a monumentary uh, type of city to give the strength for not only people in China, but rest of the world, how we can come together and defeat a disease uh, united as, as one team. So where are people going to travel in the next few months since they, it looks as if they're going to be stuck at least within China, it's going to be domestic travel? What sort of searches are you seeing? We have seen that around the big cities, uh, the uh, trips around the cities within two to three hours for weekend is very high and resort hotels get lots of businesses. But a lot of these places also are, are places that you need to fly to. Have you right. noticed that people are wary about flying or that they are asking that there needs to be an empty seat beside them? Uh, for flights, uh, we always wear masks. Uh, when we get into the airport, where you see uh, large crowds in airports uh, and people bring hand sanitization uh, to travel with them. So good habits uh, have been developed uh, as a good result from this uh, control of the virus. What about prices? Have ticket prices for these domestic flights, have they gone up significantly? Because that's what all of us are worried about. We're worried that you know, regional travel is going to end up being really expensive. On the contrary, I think because the uh, business is still on the ramping up stage, we have seen hotels uh, have very uh, reasonable price. The price for air tickets are quite reasonable as well. Uh, as part of our revival plan uh, for domestic China and also travel on uh, plan for the global places, we're able to encourage our partners to use part of their perishable inventory and give deep discount to the consumers so we can incentivize the market and give more confidence uh, for our consumers to travel. Trip.com has been trying to allay fears about refunds because people are obviously right. uncertain. So how is that going to work? So if I were to book on Trip.com uh, mm -hmm. and suddenly they're, they're, the virus you know, comes back up again, we get a second wave, do I get my money back? When China first uh, was hit by this virus, uh, it was right before the Chinese New Year. Uh, Chinese government adopted a very good policy, uh, tried to stop a group tour to go out of bound, which is a very responsible measures for the government. 
to slow down the spread and give two months uh, for the rest of the world to get ready. Uh, so on the on the receiving side, it was very difficult for uh, our team because we have seen 10x volume calling into our call center, try to cancel or delay their trips. So what we did is we, we worked with our partners around the world, uh, giving free cancellations for them uh, so that the consumers uh, are not blocked uh, by these uncontrollable events. So you're saying that there will be free cancellations. That's going to constitute quite a bit of what's going to be seen in the future. I think what we have seen are three trends on our platform. First of all, people pay a lot of attention uh, to the uh, safety standard. So for the hotels or airlines or rental cars who join us to adapt high uh, standard for safety, these uh, vendors get lots of volume. Uh, so for example, in hotel, when you enter into the hotel, you take your temperature and you show your health code, a green code or um, a health code. And then uh, you, you wear masks in a public area. And also you use uh, hand sanitizers uh, to make sure you don't spread a uh, virus around. So for these, uh, property owners who adopt to a high standard of safety, you get lots of visits uh, from the consumers. The second trend we have seen is people tend to like uh, travel with a smaller group, uh, for example, with their family, with good friends who they are familiar with, rather than with a big group they have no control with. The third way is they also prefer uh, to travel uh, with the property, with the uh, vendors who give them more flexibility. Uh, so we saw they are making bookings at the last minute. Uh, they tend to select hotels with a free cancellation policy. So basically hotels or airlines that give more flexibility, more free cancellation policies, they're going to see more customers. Right, right, exactly. But obviously it's a balancing game because hotels and airlines also need to balance their demand and supply. Uh, during the holidays where inventory is so tight, they probably cannot give you uh, too much uh, free cancellation because otherwise there are customers who are waiting, there are customers who are canceling. But in the normal business day where the occupancy rate is below 50%, uh, I think at this time, giving consumers some flexibility will win the hearts from the consumers who are not 100% confident for travel yet. have been the biggest growing group uh, for the entire global tourism industry. Is that going to happen again? Are we going to see that taking place in, in the coming uh, months and years? Or do you think we're going to have a fundamental shift where Chinese tourists are going to say, no, maybe we stay home now, we stay within China? I think uh, right now we take it in three phases. Uh, the first phase is domestic China travel business. I think it's very well under the way for recovery because uh, Chinese government has done a very good job uh, contain the virus. The second step is we look at the nearby countries such as Korea, Japan, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uh, if you look at these countries, the death rate and infection rate is very well under control. Uh, so these countries probably will be on the second wave for recovery. And the third wave is the rest of the world. Uh, I, if uh, uh, China 
uh, and the rest of the world uh, have seen the vaccine has developed, the medicine has developed. Uh, I think that will inject lots of confidence uh, in the consumers. And we very much uh, love to be a bridge between our partners in the global places uh, to drive the consumers to these uh, great properties who badly need business, who badly need job opportunities. As a ordinary traveler, as an ordinary consumer, the thing I really want to know is when do you think that I will be able to travel freely to most parts of the world, perhaps not every single part, but at least I'd be able to come to Beijing, I'd be able to go to New York, I'd be able to go to London, I'd be able to go to Jakarta. I think right now, uh, domestic travel is totally open for everybody in the world because you know what your country is doing. So we already see a lot of domestic recovery in different parts of the world. The second thing we will see is travel bubble. Uh, so for two countries which have low risk of the infection, uh, the government might form an alliance to enable people to travel. We have already seen green link is that being established between China and Singapore, China and Korea, uh, and it will expand uh, gradually. And the third step will be waiting for the breakthrough on the medical field. Uh, I think the uh, Dr. Fosse already says by the end of this year, in the USA, probably the vaccine will be made available and China will do the same thing, UK will do the same thing. Once the medical breakthrough is obtained, uh, I am very confident uh, people will feel safe to travel all around the world. So your guess, even though you're not a medical person, but your guess and your hope is, is that by the end of the year and definitely by 2021, we will be mm -hmm. able to travel with reasonable freedom. Yeah, that's, that's my belief, yes. You're a major player, so you have a voice and you can actually talk to various uh, civil aviation authorities as well. Some of the civil aviation authorities are saying that everybody's going to have to have a, uh, a, a virus test before they take an international flight. The question is, who's going to pay for that? Uh, different countries are adopting different policies. Uh, in China, if it's for a business trip, normally company will offer uh, the reimbursement uh, for that. And for leisure travelers, uh, depending on the family, sometimes a family pays for it. Uh, so I think it uh, really is a concerted effort uh, to get the comfort level up. Uh, so that people feel safe to travel. But what you've just said means that it's going to be the consumer. We are going to have to be the ones to pay for the test. Yeah, I think uh, what I have seen in China is that uh, we have people who need to go uh, somewhere. And obviously, uh, the companies who are paying for the uh, people who are traveling for business. But for normal tourists, we should expect to have to pay for a test if we're going to do an international you know, trip for my, a family outing or at the end of the year, maybe. Yeah, normally, I think depending on the uh, country, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, individuals, uh, some individuals are paying for it. But uh, for uh, my father, for example, who just uh, come abroad, entered into China board, government paid everything. You know, they offer very good uh, support for the people who are coming abroad. Uh, they have uh, facilities, hotel reserved, food ready, uh, blankets. Uh, it's all paid by the government. That's for, uh, uh, for Chinese, so to say, coming home. So most governments will be happy to pay for their own nationals, but they wouldn't want mm -hmm. to have to pay for some foreigner who's coming for a, for a tourist visit. Yeah, before the lockdown, down off the borders, I think uh, uh, Chinese government also pays for the inbound visitors as well. Budget airlines. 
Some people mm. are saying that budget airlines are going to go bust and we may never have budget airlines in the same format again. Do you agree? No, I think uh, whoever uh, has the most efficiency and the strongest earnings power will win. Uh, so if you look at the earnings power, for example, Southwest or uh, Asian Air, uh, these companies probably will uh, survive better than the company uh, who do not have the same efficiency and earnings power. But we've seen some pretty big names like Virgin. They are in real trouble and, and they are an iconic uh, you know, budget airline. Yeah, that's uh, true. Uh, I think it's very difficult for every player, not only Virgin, for every player in the business because there is no business. People are not traveling. I think once the vaccine is in the invented and the medicine has a breakthrough, uh, people will start to travel on budget airline uh, again. Uh, as long as the earnings power and efficiency for budget airlines are ascertained, uh, they will be able to do well in the future. Now, what about that very, at this time, controversial form of tourism, and that is cruises. Cruises mm. were growing tremendously. Uh, there were so many people all over the world, particularly with a silver generation, who want to take mm. cruises. Do you think that cruises are going to come back? Or are they gone forever? Uh, no, I think, again, uh, if the scientists have developed a medicine and a vaccine, uh, people are immune for these diseases, uh, I, I'm sure people will go back to the cruise uh, right away. pandemic being something that goes away and then comes back and then goes away and come back and then as a result travel will also have these kinds of you know going forward we all go and travel and suddenly everybody's curtailed again travel is something we will always run into unexpected uh, events so you're kind of saying that there always will be risky things taking place in the world yes yes even in a normal travel, like uh, uh, we see diving trip, uh, normal in a peaceful time, uh, people will die from this travel. We need to develop a rescue plan uh, if that happens. What about the recent uh, small spike that we've seen in Beijing and people are talking mm. about the second wave? Does that worry you? Not really, not really. I mean, China have 1.4 billion people. Uh, so it's uh, unreasonable uh, to assume uh, China will have zero uh, infected rate. I think we just need to adjust our psychology uh, as long as our ICU is ready, uh, medical hospitals are ready, uh, we have a good robust system to cure these people, we should treat it as a normal of course of the business. How do you think that Chinese tourists are going to be received when they start traveling internationally again? I think based on, on my conversation with different government, different travel bureaus, uh, they really would like to host uh, the customers uh, from all over the world because their infrastructure is built to host the inbound customers, uh, countries such as Thailand, Singapore, etc. So I think once the vaccine is ready, uh, once people feel uh, confidence that uh, uh, it's it's okay, uh, it, it will be safe. Uh, if people all around the world will be able to travel uh, to the destinations they like to. And the reverse. What about China? Because China is also seeing a lot of tourists coming from overseas. Do you think that yeah. uh, you know Chinese tourists will? I mean, overseas tourists are going to be viewed with a little wariness because. 
they may not have gone through all that China has gone through. Yeah, I think uh, before the outbreak of the virus, uh, the Chinese government adopted a policy to welcome more inbound uh, guests, inbound friends all over the world to visit China. Uh, this uh, pandemic only put a very temporary pause uh, in the process. But in the long run, China will be a more open country uh, to welcome our friends all over the world. Well, you're an optimistic person because unfortunately some places have seen illustrations of racism, which were connected, mm -hmm. unfortunately, to the pandemic. Yeah, I think uh, travel is the best way uh, to counterbalance this uh, racism. Uh, it's a soft uh, way for people to get to know each other. We are all humans. We are all the same. And travel brings the world closer. And Trip.com very much would like to contribute to our efforts uh, in this process. Where are you and your family going to travel to next? And when are you going to do that? We already take our kids to travel everywhere around Shanghai. Uh, and in the summer, we're planning to take them uh, to some places as far uh, more remote, uh, hopefully uh, give them some opportunity to explore the nature. Okay, so that's going to be your next trip and it's going to be I I over the summer holidays already? That's correct, that's correct. And you are not worried that there is anything dangerous going to happen to you? No, in China it's very safe. I, I love to see more local government and, and, and our uh, central government will encourage, pe encourage people to travel because it's important. 10% uh, of the GDP are associated with travel. 10% of the job opportunities are created by the travel business. So it's very important for us to, on one hand, monitor and control the virus, but on the other hand, encourage people to conduct their life and business as normal. Ms. Sun, thank you very much for being on In Conversation. Thank you so much for having me.